All right, time for religion. Last week we worked on this side, and many of you have shown me that you finished it. Today we're going to work on Acts of the Apostles, the early days of the church again. Um, we read chapters 9 through 15 last time. We're going to read some of our earlier chapters to do this side at the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles where we hear about the ascension um, and choosing the apostle to replace um, Judas Iscariot from the disciples and about our very first um, Catholic martyr. Um, some of the questions on there are from what we learned about before, which was um, the conversion of St. Paul. So I'm not going to reread that part. Hopefully you remember it from last week and you can work along with me as we go through this. Um, otherwise, it also does include Pentecost. I'm not sure. We're not going to read that today because we're going to be reading that later. And... Um, the week and next week so let me find whoops I went too far go back a little bit and there we go find the first part of the Acts of the Apostles so if you have your own Bible and you want to get it out we're gonna to go to the Acts of the Apostles which can be found after the Gospel of John take my glasses off there and we are going to read the first chapter Preparation of the Christian Mission, and Chapter 2, we are not going to read, so that's about Pentecost, and the rest is about Pentecost, so just Chapter 1, um, and this is the promise of the Spirit, it will also talk to us about Jesus' ascension, which is coming up at the end of May, remember there are 40 days from his resurrection to the ascension in which he spent time on earth with the apostles and with Mary, his mother, and Mary Magdalene, the early women leaders of the church, um, teaching them about how the church was to be going forward and giving um, them the authority to act as the very first priests, bishops, and pope of the church, and that that would be carried down. So in chapter one, the promise of the spirit. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. So the writer of Acts of the Apostles is actually St. Luke, who wrote a gospel as well. So in the first book he's referring to is his gospel. Now he's going to talk about what happened after Jesus died and rose from the dead. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And we'll start reading about that tomorrow. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking up, looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. The first community in Jerusalem when they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, who is Judas, not Judas Iscariot. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, 
together with some women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Those would be cousins or followers, not his, he didn't have actual blood brothers. During those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the brothers. There was a group of about 120 persons in this one place, as you can see, not blood brothers. He said, my brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before him through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was the guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was numbered among us and was allotted a share in this ministry. He bought a parcel of land with the wages of his iniquity and follow, falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all his insights spilled out. This became known to everyone who lived in Jerusalem. So that parcel of land was called in their language, Ekeldma, that is field of blood, for it is written about in the book of Psalms. Let his encampment become desolate and may no one dwell in it. And may another take his office. Therefore, it is necessary that one of the men who accompanied us, the whole time the Lord Jesus came and went among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day in which he was taken up from us, become with us a witness to his resurrection. That means a full apostle. So they proposed to Joseph called Barsabbas and that's not Barabbas, Barsabbas. It's a different man. They sound the same, a lot alike though. Who was also known as Justice and Matthias. Then they prayed, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this apostolic ministry from which Judas turned away to go to his own place. Then they gave lots to them, and they lot fell upon Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles. We're going to stop there. When they say they gave lots, that means they they threw. Um, they weren't like dice today. We would call them dice, but back then, um, it's the way that the Jewish people had been instructed by God in the book of Exodus. Um, and the book of Leviticus to decide things. So basically they were heads or tails on a lot of things if it fell a certain way. So they did heads or tails and Matthias won and he became the next apostle. Pretty even one, I guess. I guess. They were both willing and very, very, very good people. So, um... Let's go to our crossword puzzle, and we have our word bank over here. We have ascension, evangelize, martyrs, Holy Spirit, Barnabas, who we heard about when we read the story of St. Paul, good news, conversion, Stephen, persecuted, confirmation, Peter, Pentecost, Matthias, Apostles' Creed, letters, and Mary Magdalene. So there's two words in there, Stephen and confirmation, um, that we haven't actually read about. They come at the very end of the story about Pentecost, but I think you're going to be able to do it anyways. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to write down all the across numbers, and we're going to go down the list, and you're going to write them in with me. You may already know them. You're going to have to find them on there. I'm just going to write them down. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Okay. Number one, the first martyr of the church who was stoned to death. And that was one of the two words I said we hadn't heard the story of yet. But I know that we read about him um, in our saint cards. So that would be Stephen. So one across, remember I'm doing across, is Stephen. Okay, take a minute, find where that one goes, and write it in. Remember, if any time you need to catch up, just pause the video. Number three, one chosen by lot to take Judas's place. We just read about that person, and we know that that is Matthias. Okay, so we're going to write that in, three across. 
right. Number five, the main way St. Paul communicated during his traveling. And I talked about that when we read the story of St. Paul and that a lot of the rest of the New Testament was made up of these, and those are letters. He wrote letters back to the churches that he started in the different areas he went to. Five across his letters. Uh, seven, accepting the beliefs of the church. When we accept the beliefs of the church, we call that conversion. Conversion. All right, find number seven across and write in conversion. Remember to be very careful and write neatly one letter in each box and to spell the words correctly. Otherwise, you get frustrated. Number 10, the third person of the Holy, of the Holy Trinity, and that, of course, is the Holy Spirit. And it will be separated in the word list, but when you write it in the puzzle, you're going to write it all one with no spaces in the middle. Number 11 is ideas brought to the early church through evangelization by St. Paul and the apostles. Ideas brought to the early church was called good news. And again, that will not be separated in the puzzle. All right, number 13, the sacrament that gives us courage to be soldiers of Christ. And this is one we haven't really talked about. Um, in the reading that we've done now, but you guys are well aware of which con which sacrament that is, and then it's coming up for you in a couple years, and that is confirmation. Confirmation. Write that for number 13 across. All right, number 14. When a person is tormented for their beliefs, they are... But a lot of long words persecuted. Persecuted. All right, almost done with the acrosses. Number 15, the leader of the women disciples who followed Jesus. So there's one woman on the list, and we know her well, Mary. Magdalene. Is it Anne? Yes, it's Anne. And again, that's two words, but in the puzzle, it's always just one word all the way across. And number 16, when the descent of the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles, after which they were able to speak in tongues, and we've talked about what that means, and we know that that's the birthday of the church, even if we haven't read the actual story yet. Pentecost. Number 16 is Pentecost. Okay, I'm going to hold that steady for a little bit and then raise it up and show the bottom part. If you've gotten behind, this is a good time to pause the video and catch up with us. I'm going to erase my board and we're going to go to the Downs, there are not as many of those. There never seem to be, always more across. And there are number two, number four, number six, number eight, number nine, and number twelve. So only six of them. Number two, who took leadership role with the apostles and was a martyr? All the apostles were martyrs except for John. Um, and that would be Peter, who was given the keys to the church to become our first pope. So two across is Peter. 
Okay, number four says, Beliefs and Teachings of the Early Church. Um, and you've learned this prayer this year. Remember, I taught you that the Apostles' Creed was written in the early days of the church to help everyone understand and learn and memorize the basic teachings of our faith. Since most people could not read or write, they wrote a prayer that people can memorize and say that would help them to remember what they were being taught. Apostles Creed. And that'll be all one word in the puzzle too. To go forth and share the good news is to evangelize. Evangelize. To go forth and share the good news. Oh, number eight, you know that one. Super, super, you know, easy one, you know this one. Those who died rather than give up their faith are called, that's right, martyrs. Not an easy word to spell, so be careful with it, but you all know about martyrs. The number nine, Jesus goes up into the clouds for the last time. And we read about that today, that is the ascension. Ascension, not assumption, that's Mary. Jesus goes under his own power because he is God. He is not raised up under the power of God the Father. He goes on his own. And then the last one is a holy man who defended St. Paul after his conversion. We read about him um, last week, Barnabas. And he traveled with him as well as he traveled around starting um, new churches, which would be parishes and new places. So Barnabas. So our downs look like this. And there's the bottom three. And you can finish catching up and get those written down and then... You can put that into your turn-in pile um, and take a picture of it and let me see that you finished it and then you can turn it in on Friday. We're going to go on to learning more about Pentecost next. All right.